Hi, I'm Bob Hockney, Multi-County Extension Agent, North Florida Research and Education Center, Suwannee Valley. Welcome to the University of Florida's wonderful world of hydroponics. Here at the center's hydroponic plots, we conduct research and demonstrations in an effort to expand the use of hydroponics in the state of Florida. We have several different types of soilless systems that can be used by a hydroponic grower. These various systems provide us an opportunity to grow lots of different crops. Hydroponic producers in Florida grow crops such as sweet colored bell peppers, tomatoes, both cluster and beefsteak types, all types of lettuces, herbs, and even strawberries. The hydroponic practices oftentimes are, are very simple, utilize very little space, and it's no wonder that folks are starting to own their small hydroponic plots to grow vegetables and plants all over the state. In this video, we're going to be demonstrating how easy it is to build and maintain a basic hydroponic system. We'll look at the materials used to construct such a system, give you tips on the maintenance, and then discuss the nutrient system needed to grow healthy and beautiful plants. And one of the simplest forms of hydroponics is the floating garden. And we've got a couple of examples here uh, today that we're going to look at. And with me is Mike Sweat, the County Extension Director from uh, Baker County. And this is a floating garden actually in a little kiddie pool. You can see it has a sheet of styrofoam there with some beautiful uh, lettuce on here, ready to harvest and put in your salad. And this is a small little container here. Also the same type of a thing, as simple as a floating piece of styrofoam with a lettuce crop in it and a nutrient solution in the, in the pool of water. So these are a couple of examples that you could use for building your own type of floating garden. But we're going to build one for you today, a standard 4x8 floating garden. And Mike, uh, you're going to help me with this today? And Very simple process. Shouldn't take us less than an hour and we'll be in business. Okay. Well, let's get to it. Good. Okay, Mike, I see we've got some lumber pre-cut here ready for, for building our frame to go around the 4x8 sheet of styrofoam. Tell us a little bit about the lumber that you've got prepared here and how, how we're going to do this. Yes, we've got pressure treated lumber that um, will resist termite infestation here in Florida. The idea, of course, is to build a frame, a wooden frame that will accommodate the 4x8 sheet of styrofoam that we'll be using uh, to float our plants on. First thing we do is drill some um, holes, pre-drilled holes, using wood screws. We fasten our corners together. It's really important to remember in site selection and locating your water garden, you need to remember and have a, lo a level site, as level as possible. It is free of debris, clean, uh, no rocks, limbs, grass roots, that type thing. We've got uh, ground cover, regular nursery ground cover uh, on the, the floor today. However, you could use a piece of old carpet, linoleum, uh, or just a couple of layers of, of plastic to, to keep from puncturing the, um, the plastic that we'll use to, to hold our, our nutrient solution. And Mike, I see we're going to be building this one inside one of our greenhouses here at the center, but uh, it doesn't have to be inside a, a greenhouse. It, these floating gardens would work very well outdoors, uh, depending on the crop, really. If it's a lettuce crop like is very popular in these floating systems, that certainly could be grown outside without a greenhouse. So uh, let's go ahead and finish our, finish our framing here. You know, to make the wood screws go in a little easier, you could take and apply liquid soap a couple of drops to the wood screw before putting it in the wood. It just makes it go in a lot easier. The other thing, we're using here 2x8 lumber on the sides and 2x10 lumber on the ends. What we're trying to do is, is have a bed that would be at least six inches deep with nutrient solution. And then of course the ends are a little higher to keep the, the styrofoam bed from floating off. So that's our, our purpose there in having the larger lumber. The next step involves squaring and leveling the frame we have constructed. Mike, one of the easiest ways for us to uh, square up this frame is to use the template of the piece of styrofoam that we're going to use. 
make sure that it fits in there. And I think in this, in this situation, we're in pretty good shape. If it was a little bit off, you can always adjust it by moving the frame to, to get it squared. And so we've got a little bit of extra space around the edges here so that when we fill it with water, it's gonna be able to float. So we're in pretty good shape with the square. Why don't you check the, uh, check the level? To check the level, you can place a level on the sides. Looks like we're in real good shape here and also on the ends. Mike, the next thing we wanna do is to put our plastic over top of the frame and get ready to put the solution in, in the frame. We're using a clear six mil poly cover here. These are type of plastic is readily available at almost any of the home garden centers and that type of thing around. The six mil indicates the thickness of the uh, plastic. Right, it's a, the six mil is a very durable, durable plastic, very thick, and will work really well in this kind of a system. The thing we want to remind folks to uh, remember in purchasing this plastic is that uh, the thickness is, means that we want to be able to use it for a number of years, and the six mil plastic will service in that purpose. The other thing among the in the site selection, we want to make sure that the site is not going to have a bunch of gravel and sticks and rocks underneath it, and the six mil will, will tolerate a little bit of that, but, uh, but not a lot. So we lay it out. We've got plenty of extra here. We begin to form it on the inside of our frame. And Mike, you've got some battens there that we're going to sort of fasten it to the frame. Yeah, we begin any type of, of wooden uh, battens. These were some stakes that we had available. Um, we want to begin by fastening it on one side, just with a couple of screws to hold it down. And then we'll actually go in and, and begin applying the nutrient solution into our pool that we've constructed. And it will form the edges when we apply the nutrient solution in there. So this is just basically to hold it down until we can get a little bit of a nutrient solution in the bottom. Okay, we're now ready to begin mixing and measuring our nutrient solution. And Mike, this is probably one of the most important aspects of this, uh, of this project. And fortunately, we, we've got some things, some products available to us that make it relatively easy. There's uh, several complete uh, fertilizer materials that are available locally. And in this case, we're probably gonna choose to use this Peters 202020 uh, professional material this morning and it has all of the micronutrients in it. And that's, that's very, very important because in these floating gardens, there is no soil to uh, supply any of those micronutrients. So we've got to be able to supply them entirely with a fertilizer that we're going to be adding to, uh, to, the, to the, uh, the floating garden. So mm -hmm. we're going to use the Peters 202020 with micronutrients. And then we've also found for the majority of the crops that we grow here that a little bit of additional magnesium sulfate which is Epsom salts and also readily available, uh, is very beneficial to add to the floating garden. So what we're gonna do is mix up a, a solution here that's gonna have two teaspoons per gallon of the 202020 and one teaspoon mm -hmm. per gallon of the Epsom salts. So if we wanna begin, uh, if you wanna begin measuring okay. those in, uh, that'll work for us. This particular mixture has worked really well for a wide variety of our vegetable crops that we'd like to grow in these floating gardens. So whether it's lettuce or other leafy green vegetables, this combination has worked on a wide range of, uh, of, of, of crops that we can grow in these floating gardens. If you'll remember, we fastened the batten only to one side to hold the plastic in. Uh, this was enable us to mix our nutrient solution and begin pouring it in so that the liquid, the weight of the liquid would actually preform the bottom of our, our, our form here. So let's go ahead and begin applying our nutrient solution. We're gonna repeat this several times until we have the, uh, the pool filled up. It's important to remember during your first filling of the, um, of the pool, you need to be sure and measure every, every single bucket uh, later on, you'll, you'll get a feel for how many gallons this will hold, but initially, at, at least, you need to mix and measure every, every bucket. Okay, let's go get a second five gallons, Mike. Okay.
Okay, Mike, that uh, finishes up the nutrient solution, gives us about 100 gallons in this particular float system. That's a good, uh, good amount of nutrient solution. We want to finish up the battens now, and I want to be kind of careful here on the corners that we make sure that we take care of all the extra gathering of the plastic here so that the styrofoam uh, piece will fit down nicely with plenty of freedom of movement inside the corners there. So go ahead and uh, let's, let's batten this one down. Okay, now that we've gotten things all battened down, we want to go ahead and trim off the extra here so that this won't flap around in the wind. I'm just going to go along here and get this set, and we'll just run it right down the side. We're now ready to begin measuring and drilling our holes to uh, support our plants for the water garden. What we found best that works here at the research center is a configuration of six inches from the outside of the styrofoam and then 12 inches between the plants. This spacing will work real good for most of the crops that we're going to be growing here. Once you have your, your spacing marked off with a styrofoam pin or something, we're ready to begin drilling. We're using a two and a half inch hole saw. The reason that we use a two and a half inch hole saw is that the pots that we're going to use fit perfectly in the hole that has been drilled. So if you're using a different size pot, you would need to adjust your, your size of your hole saw. Styrofoam cuts really easy. It's a little dusty, and if the dust bothers you, then you need to consider wearing a dust mask. Okay, that's the last of our 32 holes. We're now ready to begin inserting the uh, containers. Okay, and Mike, we have been using these nice plastic mesh pots that are available at many of the hydroponic supplier companies, uh, mail order catalog type places across the country. And uh, they work really well. They fit exactly into this two and a half inch hole that we have pre-drilled here. And the important aspect of this fit is that the bottom of the plastic cup protrudes through just a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, so that it actually allows the plant to sit into the water, the pool of water of nutrient solution under the styrofoam sheet. So that's the critical thing, and of course not everybody perhaps would uh, like to order these from a, from a hydroponic catalog, and I know that you've had some success with using something a lot simpler than that that is available around the around sure, the home. Sure, Bob. It, it's easy to take a styrofoam cup, basically the same size, trim the top off of it, and then cut some triangles in the bottom. Uh, it, it serves the same purpose, and it's basically the same size. To do that, simply take a, a knife and trim about four triangles in the bottom. It doesn't have to be exact. and we're good to go. Okay, so Mike, in our case, we've got an inch and a thick, inch and a half thick styrofoam sheet here, and the, either the styrofoam cup or the plastic cup fits through just to the bottom of it barely, protrudes through the, uh, the styrofoam sheet. You can use thinner sheets than, than this inch and a half. If you go to a, a three quarter inch perhaps, would work just as well in terms of the float system. However, it's not as sturdy and tends to uh, not last as long as these inch and a half uh, thick sheets would. So we prefer to use the inch and a half sheets of styrofoam for our, our hydroponic floating gardens here at the center. One good way to check the depth, make sure you have them level with the bottom and extending no more than a, an eighth of an inch, is to have it on a flat surface and just put your pot in level with the, the bottom of the styrofoam. Okay, looks like we're ready to move into our, our floating water garden. Okay, Mike, we'll put this finished 
floating dock onto our pool here. And as you notice, we've got lots of uh, play around the edges here that we need so that the system is able to go up and down as the water level goes up and down in the pool. So today we're gonna plant lettuce in this, uh, in this floating system. And one of the systems that would work really well for the homeowner will be to use something called a Jiffy 7. And these are generally available at, a, at home garden centers or mail order catalogs. And it's a compressed pellet of peat. And when you add water to it, it swells up and you can put the seed in it. In this case, we've planted a lettuce seed in this. These plants are about three and a half weeks old. And the good thing about these Jiffy 7s is that the bottom of the Jiffy 7 pellet is flat. And so it fits nicely into the bottom of our little cups in the floating styrofoam. So that's one way that we can, we can do this if the uh, homeowner wants to grow their own transplants. But if they go to buy some commercially available transplants, they generally will have a little bit of a, maybe a triangular shape to the root ball and the plug plants. And this again is lettuce, both red and green leaf lettuce is what we're gonna plant today. And these will work equally as well in these, in these systems. The bottom of the transplant is put in the bottom of the cup and then we lean it up against the cup so that it stays in position. If you have a little bit of trouble with that falling, you can either support it with some toothpicks through the side of the container or else put some stone or something in here to kind of hold it in place. But we have not had that uh, to worry about. We, we put them in there, lean them up against the side and it works very well. So for today, what we want to do is go ahead and plant this. We've got both reds and greens to plant. If you want to go down that side, Mike, and I'll work on this side. Okay, so we've now finished planting our floating garden here at the center. We've got 32 lettuce plants planted. And you can see that it's a very easy process to construct and plant one of these floating gardens on your own, in your own backyard, on your patio, or in your garden. All of the materials and supplies that we use in these floating gardens are readily available at your local garden centers in your own communities. And on average, the total cost of building and planting one of these floating gardens is going to be in the range of $40 to $45. And of course, much of that can be reused, uh, many gardens, uh, many crops in the, in the future. So now that we've got this planted, uh, you'll be amazed how quickly and fast these crops will grow in this, in this floating garden and you'll be amazed what this would look like in just a couple of weeks. Let's review the steps involved in building our water garden. Okay, the first thing we did was to choose a good level site. We constructed our frame with treated lumber. We leveled and squared the frame. We used six mil poly to line our frame, measured the fertilizer and water, and filled our line frame. Then we attached the battens to secure the poly. We drilled 32 two and a half inch holes in the styrofoam sheet. We placed our cups in the holes and planted our lettuce. As you can see, this is a very easy method of constructing a floating water garden. Wishing you the best of luck, this is Mike Sweat from the Baker County Extension Office. And Bob Hockmuth from the North Florida Research and Education Center wishing you happy floating gardens. <laughs>